Worst mountaineering disasters in history explained. Mountains are some of the most beautiful places on this earth, but don't let their beauty bewitch you. They have some of the harshest and most formidable environments. Even the most skillful, highly trained climbers can become victims of mountaineering tragedies. Avalanches, frostbite, exhaustion, and altitude sickness are just some of the dangers that, if you tackle the big ones, you may have to face. We've compiled a list of the worst tragedies in mountaineering history. The stories, though sad, are fascinating and are a harrowing reminder that we need to take the proper precautions when adventuring in our mountains. Grab your climbing gear and let's go. Tragedy on the Eger 1936. In July 1936, four experienced German and Austrian climbers, Tony Kurtz, Andreas Hinterstoisser, Willy Angerer, and Eddie Rayner, set out to tackle the north face of the Eiger. The ascent started off successfully, and the team looked set for the summit until Angerer sustained a head injury from falling rocks. The group was forced to turn back and down climb as he could not continue. When the team reached the Hinterstoisser Traverse, it wasn't called that back then, on the down climb, it was uncrossable, and they were forced to abseil further down the north face. On the 21st of July, an avalanche hit the group, sending Hinterstoisser falling to his death and slamming Angerer into the wall, killing him on impact. Rayner, who had been belaying the two, was pulled into the wall by the weight on the ropes and died minutes later of asphyxiation, while Kurz remained uninjured. A rescue team attempted to reach him, but was unable to get to him, so the German was left hanging throughout the night in freezing blizzard conditions. The next morning, the rescue team came back. He knotted the rescue team's rope onto his and began the abseil to safety. All was going well until he reached the knot from the rescue team's added rope. Unable to manipulate his abseil gear over the knot, he looked at the rescuers and said, Ich kann nicht mehr, meaning I cannot go on anymore and soon passed away from exposure. Cairn Gorm Plateau Mountaineering Tragedy, 1971. Though not the tallest mountains in the world, the tragedy in the Cairn Gorms, Scotland, in November 1971, is still regarded as the worst tragedy to ever happen in the history of British mountaineering. Six 15-year-old school students and their two leaders set off on a navigational expedition in a remote area of the Scottish mountains. However, a routine trip quickly became a disaster when the weather deteriorated and they had to head for an emergency shelter. They failed to reach the shelter and became stranded in the open for two nights on the high plateau in a harsh and wild blizzard. Search parties were organized from Glenmore Lodge and more than 50 men participated in the search, including troops, police, and mountain rescue teams. The search had to be called off as the weather dramatically worsened and night fell. Helicopters were later brought in to continue the search. As searching took place, the leaders and children had no option but to bury in the snow, but the students were starting to be buried with snow falling mercilessly. Five of the school students and one of the leaders died on the plateau due to exposure. The sixth student and the second leader survived the worst tragedy in British mountaineering history with severe hypothermia and frostbite. The Lennon Peak Mountaineering Tragedy, 1974. In July 1974, an ill-equipped group of eight women headed by Elvira Shatiava attempted to make the first all-female ascent of Lennon Peak 7134M to prove that women were equal to men. The group reached the summit on the 5th of August, despite warnings from their meteorologist at base camp that bad weather was inbound. A storm hit the team while they were on the summit, and they were permitted to set up camp and try to wait it out. While camped out on the summit, the women's small cotton ridge tents were destroyed by the storm's high winds. In the absence of a snow shovel to dig shelter, they were forced to descend. One by one, the women succumbed to the exposure on the mountain, and it's thought that their unwillingness to leave behind sick teammates was the reason they all perished. The team was also under so much pressure to succeed and prove everyone wrong that they were willing to push themselves further into a situation they were incapable of handling. The 1986 K2 Mountaineering Tragedy In August 1986, British climber Alan Rouse attempted to climb K2's difficult Northwest Ridge 
instead of the conventional Abruzzi Ridge. After several unsuccessful attempts, his team decided to turn back. Rouse, however, wanted success and joined up with various other climbers on the conventional route, including Austrians Alfred Imitzer, Willy Bauer, Hannes Wieser, and Kurt Diemberger, Polish woman Dobroslawa Miodowicz Wolf, and Brit Julie Tullis in an attempt to reach the top. On their descent from the summit, Imitzer, Bauer, and Rouse found Miodowicz Wolf asleep in the snow and persuaded her to descend with them. They could not, however, deter Diemberger and Tullis from continuing up and the pair reached the summit at 7 p.m. But on the way down, Tullus fell, and they were forced to bivy out in the open. When all climbers reached Camp 4, a storm blew, and they decided to wait it out with no food or gas to melt snow. On the night of the 6th of August, Tullus died from high-altitude pulmonary edema, fluid on the lungs as a result of the altitude. The rest of the team needed to move sharpish to survive, and they left on August 10th at the first sign of a break in the storm. Rouse was in severe pain whenever he was conscious and was left behind in a tent to die. Imitzer and Wieser also collapsed and died not far from camp. With just Bauer, Miodovich Wolf, and Diemberger left, Miodovich Wolf passed out on a fixed rope section and fell to her death. Diemberger and Bauer were the only two that survived, with hands and feet ravaged by frostbite. The Lennon Peak Mountaineering Tragedy, 1990 On the 13th of July, 1990, 45 mountaineers were stationed at Camp 2 on the Razdalnaya route at 5300M on Lennon Peak, preparing for their next ascent to Camp the Third. That evening, a minor earthquake shook the mountain, loosening a serac and falling onto the slope above the camp, causing a massive snow and ice avalanche. Within seconds, the whole camp had been wiped out and 43 out of the 45 climbers had been buried in snowy graves. The two survivors could hear their comrades shouting for help hours after the slide but failed in any attempts to rescue them as the ice set like concrete immediately. A witness from Camp 1, 1000 M below, remembered one of the two survivors stumbling into the camp saying, they're all dead. The witness also reported feeling no earthquake due to the glacier absorbing the shocks. Rescue teams tried to recover the bodies of the deceased, but only one of the 43 was ever found. The 1996 Everest Mountaineering Tragedy Known as one of the most lethal years in Everest's history, 1996 saw the deaths of 15 climbers, eight of whom died on the 10th of May. On this day, 33 climbers from three groups attempted to reach the summit. Guides had forgotten to set up fixed ropes in advance, so the groups were delayed for over two hours on their ascent. These delays meant that a buildup of climbers caused a bottleneck at the Hillary Step, and many summited past the recommended summit time of 2 p.m., which allowed for a safe descent back to camp. At 5 p.m., there were still climbers trying to get to the top, and by 5.30 p.m., a blizzard had blown in, burying the fixed ropes that had been placed and any trail that the groups had blazed on their ascent. As the blizzard got worse, several climbers from both groups became lost on the South Coal and were forced to bivy just 20 M from a huge drop on the Kangsheng face. Four of them set off to find help when the blizzard eased. When the foursome reached Camp before, they sent a Russian named Bokriv to help the others. He located the stranded climbers, bringing three to safety while choosing to leave the remaining two, as they were in hypothermic comas and close to death. Sherpas were sent to check on them the next day, only to find they were so covered in ice that they had to be chipped off their faces. Once again, the pair were left as they were presumed dead. Shortly after, one regained consciousness and in a feat of extreme human endurance, stumbled onto his frostbitten feet and staggered, half blind, his eye had frozen over, to Camp 4. The next day, at 4.43 a.m., one of the leaders radioed in from the Hillary Step stating that one climber from his group was gone and another was missing. Later in the afternoon, still stuck on the mountain, he requested base camp to call his wife for him. In an emotional exchange, he told her, sleep well, my sweetheart, please don't worry too much. He was found dead on the 23rd of May. Why are dead bodies left on Mount Everest? 
the high altitude environment and extreme conditions make retrieving bodies from Everest slopes challenging. It is highly inefficient, impractical, and dangerous to move frozen bodies, which can weigh over 300 pounds, 136 kilograms. To make matters more challenging, the unpredictable weather and logistical complexities make body recovery missions on Everest a difficult task that requires specialized skills and equipment. Some people have lost their lives while trying to recover bodies on the mountain. As a result, most fallen climbers remain on Everest, serving as a reminder of the dangers that lie ahead. What kills most climbers on Everest? The most common causes of death on Mount Everest are acute mountain sickness, falls, avalanches, exhaustion, crevasses, exposure, and hypothermia. Long list, right? Well, a lot can go wrong when climbing above 8,000 meters. Acute mountain sickness and exhaustion are believed to be the leading causes of death on the mountain. The high altitude can lead to cardiac arrests and strokes, and minor injuries can become a death sentence. Additionally, when climbers aren't feeling well or are extremely tired, errors are more likely to occur.